Okay, Mark, this is the, getting into part three. This is the longest we've gone without actually talking about betting. Yeah. Um, so, on this, well, tell us how it works. Do people bet on these pigeons? Yeah, it, it works. There's, there's lots of uh, betting on the pigeons, really. Um, you know, if it's your local club, you might have a £10 single bird nom against each other. You might have 20 people, so it'd be £200 to race in that club, £10 each. Got to get that bird back first. The first one of them 20 birds wins the 200 pounds or whatever. You just stick it in a kitty basically? Yeah, we st stick that in a kitty and the first one back out of them 20 wins that 200 pounds. Uh, the other pools we do, we do a sheet. Obviously when you get your sheet of where you send all your birds, everyone's got their, their best, what they think are their best birds that week. Uh, you, you, can, you can bet like one pound, two pound pools, three pounds pools, five pound pools, 10 pound and 20 pound pools. You put a cross on all them and pay that money in. And then, um, you know, you could take in a thousand pound on all the, everyone pulling their birds and then they pay out one in 20 to the winner until the money runs out like a tote really. So, you know, if you've got the first bird back, you'll win 20 to one your money for, for the whole lot that. So, you know, you'll come away with two or 300 pounds for that first bird, then the next bird will pick up the same until the money runs out. Nobody takes a cut from it? No. Well, sometimes the, the club might take 5% just to put back into club funds to pay for string and crates and things like, like that. But normally it's, it's all paid out. But we also have uh, what we call futurity races and one loft races, which is massive money. I mean, you can have futurity races where you put young birds, you take your babies up when they're 24 days old, they can't fly and everyone buys everyone else's pigeons. They're all in a sow. Like everyone would have a sow day where we say next Saturday, all the birds will be sold for the futurity. Whatever money they make, you race for. And then the breeder who's bred the pigeon gets 50% and the owner who races it gets 50%. And then they work out, say like you might have four sows for that one, what we call futurity race. And you could take in 25,000, 30,000 pigeons on what people's bought there. And then they race them pigeons and then that 25,000 will be divided for a certain race, which is usually the longest young bird race, which would be nearly 200 miles. And they sort of like say, right, we've got 25,000 in the kitty. The first, the first pigeon could win, the breeder will breed 2,500. The, the owner will win 2,500 and it'll go down to 1,000 and 1,000 breeder buyer right the way down to as many prizes as, as they want to do it for. Does the breeder still retain an interest in the sale? Like if one went for the jackpot? Would, if, would no, still because a... he's, he can buy it back. That's the beauty of it. If people put the pigeons up, if they love the baby, if they want to win the futurity themselves and be the breeder and the buyer, obviously they've got double the money they're going to earn. But obviously the good fanciers will have to pay top dollar to buy their babies back because everybody wants them to race. So, you know, it, it is a gamble, whatever you do. And the other, the other races are what they call one loft races. And these one loft races, they are, um, you send pigeons away, to one, one man, it might be in Wakefield in, in, in Yorkshire, or they have it in Spain, in Portugal, they have the million dollar race, what they call in, in um, South Africa, of where you send your baby, so you send 10 babies, it costs you 500 pounds, for instance, to send one baby. So if you send 10 babies for 5,000 to that one man, he races everybody's pigeons. And it's the same type of thing as the breeder buyer. He races everybody's, like, and they're all racing to that one loft. Whereas the futurity, they're all racing back to the individual lofts. These are all racing to one loft where one man is in charge of them. He doesn't own any of the pigeons. They're all what people have sent him. And then they race back and like the same thing there, they have hotspot races. And then one of them is, which is the richest prize, which is the million pound, million dollar race in South Africa. Do these pigeons, well, like that one behind you, for example, has he got a name or is it just a number? No. He, he'll just have his number, but when they get good, uh, obviously the better they are, the name, that's when you name them, because there's too many to name. I, I, I've got about 80 pigeons here at the minute, because my babies and my old birds, but all my top pigeons have all got names. Okay, then we'll talk about one called Ari in a minute, but um, I, your son Jack has mm. marked my card a bit. He said to ask you about golden rings. 
Yeah, golden rings is very similar as well. You know, you, you might buy a ring, it's, they have 10 pound golden rings of where you, you, that ring is, it goes into a, a pool. So you could sell, say, like 500 of them rings, which is 5,000 quid in, in, in the kitty. And then that will be run. You can either do it weekly for the eight race, young bird races, or like two races, the two longest races, of where you will race for that 5,000 pounds. And it's the first golden ring back that will win the money, or you might give free prizes for the two races of where there's a lot of money to be won in the golden ring race. Okay, and it also I'm told there's a fair bit of betting goes on in the, the club. You know, lots of side bets yeah, for a yeah. season. Is well, that, you know, do, do they get bigger the more drinks are gone down? Yeah, or? that's exactly it. It starts <laughs> off uh, on 20 pounds and before you know it, oh, it's, it's 200 pounds who's going to win the most races. And, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's all good banter. And it, it is all really what drives everybody on every week to train their birds, because it is hard work. I mean, when we talk about training, you know, to get in the car, you, you sometimes get up the crack of dawn at five o'clock in the morning, you're driving 60 miles there and 60 miles back, sit five hours in traffic, and they'd come back in 45 minutes. But you've got to give them, you've got, you know, you're looking for that edge to win the race on a Saturday. So, you know, if you want to have that edge, that's what you have to do. And to get the edge, I mean, you're open to end up with a, a pigeon called Harry or similar to Harry. Well, Harry was the champion of Belgium and I've got children of Harry here and grandchildren, but, uh, he was Jan Hoyman's uh, number one race in Stockcock uh, in Holland. Uh, he won three weeks on the trot, beating 27,000 pigeons the first week. I think it was 23,000 the second week, and 17,000 the third week. Uh, you know, I don't think it's probably ever been done in Belgium before or since. And, um, you know, it's, he, he's one of them once in a lifetime pigeons. I mean, He's a fantastic pigeon, and obviously he's at stud now, and uh, you know he's breeding his like. So if you got a Harry, mm. how long could you earn money breeding from that? How long do they, you know? Well, they, they usually last until they're about 13, I suppose. They live till 17, but probably stop filling at 11s to 13. But, uh, okay, so now you've bred selectively. I'm told that some people chuck a bit like the horse racing game, chuck thousands and thousands mm. at it, hoping yeah. that they you know, enough yeah. for want of a better expression, throw enough shit, some of it will stick. Yeah. Um, so, but you've bred selectively. Yeah. So what have you done that other people sort of don't seem able to do? Well, I, I believe that, you know, if, if, if you like eye sign in a pigeon, you pair two eye sign pigeons together. If you like a good looking pigeon, you pair two good looking pigeons together. If you want winning racing pigeons you pair two winners together and it, it, you know in my loft it doesn't matter what they're out of if they're out of my best breeding pair that have bred me hundreds of winners unless they win their self the children of them pigeons they will not get bred from i only believe in breeding out the best best of the best paired to the best of the best and breed off of them and nothing else i'm assuming there's there's like a stud book that you can re reference if you trying to do you yeah. sort of look for a, a, what would you'd imagine to be the perfect pairing for one of yeah. yours, is that sort of thing? Oh yeah, I mean every year uh, in, in the winter, you're studying, you're studying all their pedigrees, you're studying the ancestry of all the birds you've got, of what pigeon would go well with a different, with that same bloodline. You know, it's all about studying what, because obviously sometimes, like my number one stock pair at the minute, uh, 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 the mother and father of my loft, they've got seven, seven of my best pigeons of all their children. So obviously I can't pair brother to sister because it's not a done thing. You can pair grandparents or uncles and aunts together and get away with it. But uh, I don't like going too close with pigeons. So obviously you've, you've got to be very careful of giving a blood bloodline that the other blood hasn't got, you know, to try and retain the class of the, of the best pigeons. So. It's, it's you know you do that in the winter really by pairing best to best but not the, not the, a similar bloodline but not the same. Okay, now you said that a sort of average lifespan of a mm. pigeon is 17 years. They can yeah. be fertile for about 13. Yeah. How many years do they race? They usually race until they're about four or five maximum. 
you know, but most pigeons, to be honest, will race till they're three, I would say. And if they're pr pr proving really good on at racing and winning races, they normally go in the stock shed as a four, uh, to four to try and foundation of the uh, future stock. Because obviously you, you want the young blood coming in and not rely on the old pigeons to keep breeding the goods. You need younger stock. Okay, now you were a little bit pessimistic when we started saying that the, the, that the game is in a bit of a decline yeah. and now that Charles has decided to turn it in. Um, so how, but you showed me magazines, professionally, you know, professional, yeah. um, so there's obviously still a fair few. How many sort of uh, pigeon fancying clubs would there be in the UK active uh, at the minute? I couldn't hazard a guess, but all, all, I, would, I would imagine... Um, I suppose, for example, if you look at the, the up north combine years, you know, going back 40 years, they would they would send 60 to 80 thousand pigeons to a race, and today they would be down to six and eight thousand pigeons. You know, the, the, the generations of the older generations are not not there no more. They, they, they've passed away, and the children of them that would normally have carried it on, obviously with jobs, working seven days a week, guard you know, houses being built and not with gardens uh, and all the restrictions on on everything it's uh, it's very hard to see the sport getting any better to be honest okay but you've lived it all your life you're yep. still living it now and you've achieved a lot in the game mm. do you still have a goal that you're yet to achieve yeah i'd love to win the national but in saying that i've resigned out of it this year uh, because there's only sort of like um you know when, when you're competing over these distances, you've got to have everything in your favour to win nationals. If you're if you're going sprint middle distance, which which is the racing I enjoy, so you need, like we say about an edge, you need a, a bit of help with the wind in your favour and your birds being right on the day. And there's only sort of like four nationals a year where where you are able to send. And the last so many years, every time it comes to a national. The wind has literally been northeast, which is rubbish for us to win. You know, we can't compete with a, with someone flying 100 mile with the wind in their favour, and yours have got to battle the wind to get down to you. It's impossible to do it. It's a bit like a horse running on hard ground, and another one running on a bog. He's never going to be able to get get his feet out and, and beat that one on hard ground. So, so you have to bide your time and wait for the perfect day and hope you've got your pigeons in there for that day, but it's, it's hard. It's, you know, it probably only happens once or twice every other year, really, where, where it's, the conditions are right for your birds and you've sent them. So you're eyeing up the race. Have you, have you already got one in mind that might be there for winning it? Yeah, well, hopefully I was 14th. I only sent two last week, actually. There was um, 1,800 in the race. I only sent two and I was 14th with that pigeon provisionally. So I was well pleased with that, really, sending two pigeons out of 1,800. But uh, obviously I'd love to go there with like a strong team of 30 babies and uh, at one season and, and, and have a real go. But we'll have to wait and see. OK, Mark, before you go, if anybody is watching this and they've decided they really fancy giving it a go, is, yeah. is there a resource online or somewhere where they yeah, can they can look? Yeah, they can put in... There's so many videos out there of ra racing pigeons. Look on all the videos. Go to uh, look. Go on and look at the Royal Racing and Pige Pigeon Association. You can phone a secretary up. She will give you phone numbers of the nearest club in your area. You can pop along on a Friday night or a Saturday when they're racing, and see how it all works. All these pigeon clubs will will welcome you with open arms, and a lot of them, most clubs will give you a hand to start up. They will help you build your shed because most people want, want the bolt to carry on. And they will breed you young and free of charge, a lot of people would, to a new starters, to, to help them, you know, to get established. So, you know, there, there is a lot of help out there if people are interested in starting. Okay. And if you join the Croydon one, you get to meet Mark. Yep, you come and meet me. <laughs> Mark Adcock, thank yep. you very much. Thank you very much.